I am super excited to be giving you guys this presentation over the next six days. Every single day, we're going to be starting around three o'clock. So this is going to be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And this is going to be everything I know about going to zero, from zero, excuse me, to $100 million in sales. And not only that, will you guys have these videos and recordings, but we're going to be able to give you the scripts, the PDF files, the emails, everything is going to be compiled in a place where you guys will not only have this information, but everything you need to start this. We're going to start with offers. First, we want to start with how to make an offer so good, people have no choice but to say yes. And it's been a long journey for me, just so you guys can see on the left hand side, there were $88.20 in my bank account on October 4th, 2016. And the screenshot on the right was five of our different merchant accounts where you can see 5 million, 3.3 million, 49 million, 21 million, and 22 million. And I actually took those screenshots. I don't know if you guys could see right here where my mouse is, but in 12 of 2023. So this was just a little bit of about a six year journey. I didn't really start my online business until September of 2017, but this is where I was at before I started. And I like to show that for context because a lot of times people forget that the people they either idolize or the people they're trying to be like or emulate all started at zero. And that's why what I'm sharing today, if you guys can follow it, it's everything that I've possibly learned all the way to a hundred million. To date, we've worked with over 50,000 different clients. These are some of the awards we give out and uh, some of our top clients, a lot of great people. And I want you guys to keep in mind as we go through this, that this is going to be very hard to do. There's a lot of people who will get on the internet and tell you, hey, this is only one to two hours a day and you can be super rich. This is not that. This can make you very rich, but it's because it's hard. And what I've realized in life is a lot of times the things that will make you the most wealthy or the most ripped or the most shredded or the best relationships are the hardest things to do because people don't want to do them, which is exactly what gives you the advantage. This will take a lot of hard work. I also want to let you guys know that everyone starts at a different point and that's okay. Uh, if you're a one out of 10 and someone else is a five out of 10, comparing yourself to them or asking why they're a five and you're a one is useless. But understanding that you can become a 10 if you're willing to put in enough work is the point. What's great about business is that it is not genetically modified like sports are, meaning the best athletes typically have some type of genetic disposition to jump higher, run faster, lift more weight, hit harder, all those types of things that actually put me at a huge disadvantage in football because I got as big as I could get in it and as fast as I could run. And it just wasn't good enough. In business, it does not matter if you're tall, short, blue, black, white, orange, brown. You can win if you're willing to play the game between the mind. I also want you guys to know not everyone will make it. If everyone made it, then I wouldn't probably have a business. I wouldn't be business consulting. I, there wouldn't be people who looked up to me or wanted to be here. So I'm very honored that you guys are here to spend time with me and that I was able to present this. But I want you guys to understand that not everyone makes it because it's hard. And most people quit because they're not willing to continue to push through when it's difficult. And going zero to 10K is as hard as going 10 to 100K. So a lot of you guys keep in mind as you're starting, if you're a beginner and you're not making money yet, or maybe if you are, is that the first 10K, you're getting a ball moving that is right now at a standstill. And it's going to take the most amount of effort. What's cool is as you start moving this ball, so to speak, it gets easier and easier and easier. And so ironically, when I went from 100,000 to a million, that was the same level of difficulty as zero to 100. And so if it feels difficult, you're in good company. It's normal. Now, what we're going to cover over the next six days is day one, we're going to make offers so good people have no choice but to say yes. Day number two is then we're going to go into leads. Day two and three are going to be awesome. You guys don't want to miss those. Those are going to be some of the best days. And we're going to give some of our best material away uh, for free for that. Uh, day two is going to be generating how we've generated over 1.5 million leads that have produced over $100 million in personal sales. We have generated a lot of leads. Keep in mind, most of our leads cost $20 to $30. So you guys can do the math on how expensive uh, those leads are for us. 20 to $30 million we've spent on ads. 
Day number three is then how we've nurtured over 1.5 million leads that have turned into 50,000 plus clients. Day number four is how we've done over $100 million in sales with this simple sales strategy. And I'll break down the strategy for you and how we keep it really concise and concrete and simple. And then day number five is how we've helped generate our clients over $1 billion in sales. It's actually bigger at this point. Um, it gets a little hard to track uh, past a certain point, but we have generated a lot of revenue for our clients, an exponential amount. And uh, it makes sense because we've had so many clients. And then day number six is how to double revenue with no extra ad spend. And this is a hack that we've used for years that's allowed us to continue to win. So that's days one through six. I highly recommend you do not miss any of the days. If you do, we will have recordings, of course. But I'm telling you, this is some of the best content. I'm going A to Z, black and white, no BS. It's straight to the point. Now, we're going to start with how to come up with the perfect offer. Now, I've seen thousands of offers at this point. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what the offer is, as long as the offer will increase wealth, it will increase relationships. So whether it's getting more dates, getting marriage, having more sex, whatever it may be you, better health, it's got to come back to those three things. So for example, if I'm doing a mindset offer, people are not paying for the mindset, they're paying for what the mindset will give them. And I guarantee you that 99.99% of people on earth want more wealth, they want more health, or they want better relationships. And that's what you need to focus on. Now, examples of this, if you look left to right, I'm not gonna read them all, but in fitness, that's where I started my journey. A lot of you guys know I built a multi-million dollar fitness company. That's how I started. I never thought I was gonna do business consulting or doing a webinar like this, but how to lose weight, how to build muscle, how to do a handstand, I've actually seen that. A big popular one is how to fix back pain. Lots of people do those types of offers. For wealth, a lot of it is business driven. So it can be done for you ads or how to build an online business or done for you funnels, how to do profitable day trading, wholesale real estate, any strategy where you're helping someone increase their wealth. Okay, that's obviously a very popular one. Everyone who's on this call, I'm assuming if you're here, you want to make more money. That's why you're here. And then finally is relationships. So how to get more dates, how to have better sex, how to have a better marriage, how to stop a divorce, matchmaking services. That is a big pain point for a lot of people where they just want to have better relationships and they don't know how to get them. So these are examples. Now, if you haven't read it yet, highly recommend it. One of my good friends, and I think he's an amazing person, entrepreneur, Alex Hermosi. He wrote a book recently, about a couple of years ago, that's called $100 Million Offers. And it was funny when I read it because to that point, I was doing the things he described in this book, but I didn't ever have someone break it down so simplistically. And so if you're looking at the screen on the top, left to right, you have what's called a determined outcome. The determined outcome is, do, does the prospect want what I'm selling? Do they want to get in better shape? Do they want to make more money? You know, do they want to save money on taxes? Do they have that? Number two then is the perceived risk. So when you're talking to someone, for example, if I said, hey, everyone here is going to have a chance to make a hundred million dollars. A lot of you guys would think, uh, the chances of that are pretty low. I'm probably out. But if I said, everyone here, I'm going to show how to make a hundred dollars guaranteed or I'll pay it to you. you. You probably would take that because it's a very low risk. So that is the top portion. The bottom portion is the most important. And what you're going to see, a lot of the big corporations and enterprises and billion dollar companies do better than anyone else is they fix time delay and then effort and sacrifice. Let me give you some examples. If I'm in the fitness industry, part of the reason liposuction is so popular is it takes zero time minus the surgery it's instant, and it takes zero effort. You just lay on a table and get operated on. So as you're going through and building out an offer, you want to think of how can I make this an absolute no brainer? Now, some offers, you just can't make it zero effort and zero sacrifice, right? If I want to get in shape, I have to do some work. But if you know that's what people want, then we want to get as close to that as possible while still being ethical and telling the truth. So this is the formula. If you haven't built an offer yet, how do you determine if it's good? You fill in these blanks with your offer and then show it to people and see how many people want it. I knew 
I'm actually building another company right now. I'll let you guys know when it uh, comes out. But I knew it was going to hit big because when I talked to people about it, they said, I need that. When are, when are you going to be done with that? I need that. And I never had that happen before, even in elite CEOs, because in elite CEOs, one of the hardest things that we deal with, even in business consulting, is time delay and sacrifice, right? It takes time and they have to put in some work, which is why a lot of you on this call, maybe not a lot, but some of you won't be successful because you're not willing to wait and you're not willing to put an effort. So hypothetically, if I can make you working with elite CEOs, you make instant $100,000, and you don't have to do anything, all of you would sign up, of course. It's just, unfortunately, that's not how it works. But as you're creating your offer, that's what we want to try to do. Now, these are examples, again, that we were looking at that you can plug in to the formula that Alex Ramosi created. And the reason I want to give him credit is I did not create this formula. He did. And I don't want to go around acting as if I did. But if you can put these different offers into the formula, you start to see how hard will it be for you to sell? Keep in mind, when you're using a service-based business or an online business and you're selling high ticket, what makes it easier to market is how good the offer is. So one of the reasons I think I've been very successful is I'm very good at sales and I'm very good at marketing. For those people who are not, who they're not good at sales and they're not good at marketing, the problem is their offer has to be a lot better. Because if you can't convince people with your words verbally, then the other way to convince them is by having an extraordinary offer. And I want to make sure I really drive that point home. Now, I want to show you a really good offer of one of my portfolio companies as an example. All right. This guy has a offer that's $25,000 and it's with a tangible outcome. Now, a little bit of this individual's background, I won't mention names, but it's a portfolio company I own 50% of. Is this individual was a certified uh, financial planner, so CFP. And he decided to start day trading and got very wealthy that way. And because he's done so well, a lot of people want to work with him and have him either manage their money and so forth. And there's a lot of stipulations and SEC regulations and things he's had to work through, but ultimately he's been able to do it legally and ethically. And so his offer is he goes to rich individuals that have a lot of money, maybe a individual like myself, and when I say a lot of money, just whatever that number is for you. And he goes, hey, look, you give me 25 grand and then give me however much money you want me to trade. And I will help you make a three to four X ROI in a year. So if they give him $100,000, his goal is by the end of the year, they will make $400,000. Okay. And Let's walk through this formula. So if we start at the left with determined outcome, he's going to help people make money with day trading. So that's, I'd say most people would be open to that. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to make more money. Okay, great. I want that outcome. Now, the cool part here is his risk is he has an algorithm and I don't understand it fully. Keep in mind, I'm more of the, I'm the operator in this agreement. He is the visionary, so to speak, is that he has a 50% win rate which means that if they risk 250, they can win 500 and he wins enough that they don't lose money. Let's just put it that way. And let's just assume there's no way they can lose it, 0% chance, and it's pretty close to zero, but let's just assume that for the sake of this discussion. Then when we go down to time and effort, it takes one year to make three to four X and they don't have to do anything. So this is an example of an amazing offer. It's for high net worth individuals, which pay a lot better, by the way. So if you can work with people who, who do high net worth or have high net worth, excuse me, they're going to be better to work with typically because they can pay more. They don't have to do anything and there's essentially no risk and they're going to triple or quadruple their money in a year. I would say that's a pretty good offer because it hits all the main points. But specifically, if you look here, this is what most people want. Okay, so hopefully that's clear to you guys. We're going to also do Q&A at the end. So I see you guys are typing in the chat, et cetera. I'll get to that. I don't want to get distracted now, but stay till the end. I'm going to do a full q and I promise. Okay, now an example of a bad offer where there's they don't have to do anything and they can make money would be, or something that's harder to scale might be a full ad agency. So I actually have an ad agency. So ironically... I've seen the bad side of this, but it's a great selling point, but it's really hard fulfillment. Why? Because we have to run the ads, build the funnels, do the emails. We're doing a lot of stuff. And so 
what you're going to notice, and I've had, I actually have on my Facebook, if you guys haven't seen it, a discussion, uh, a paper where I've had interviews with 30 billionaires. And what I noticed over and over is that they pick companies that are basically take no effort and no time. That's why a lot of big companies are tech companies, for example, right? Google, what does Google have to do for you to use it? Nothing. It just, and then they just get paid to run ads, Instagram, Facebook, et cetera. So what you're going to be looking for is, yes, can you get the client a uh, result without them doing much, but can you also make the fulfillment very easy for you? Because if you have to work really hard, that's the only caveat. And when this formula can end up upside down. Okay. Now, in terms of your offer, other things you can do to make it more enticing to get people to want to work with you more or pay more. You can add in guarantees or promises. So for example, you've seen probably on the internet a hundred times, I will get you X appointments in 30 days or your money back. Now, as more people promise it, it becomes less enticing. But when that first came out, a lot of people loved it. You could do X results or I'll work for you for free until you do. Again, we're lowering risk. You could do done for you work. You could add bundles or bonuses. You could do a 30 day money back guarantee or a seven day free trial. That's very popular with software. You can do a database reactivation campaign. So something to note is if you're a beginner at the beginning, be willing to do crazy offers to get initial clients and prove results, but protect yourself with conditional guarantees. Let me give you an example. If you tell someone, I will work with you or you get a refund, those will work with software. Those will work with maybe products where if they're not satisfied, you'll get a refund because there is no fulfillment. The fulfillment is sending them the product or giving them access. When you're doing consulting or you're doing high ticket services, you need to be very careful because if you say, hey, you can get a refund at any time, then if they have to do work on their end, the prospect or the client, and they don't do it, and you know they won't get results and you have to give them a refund, you're going to go broke very quickly. So for example, if you said, hey, um, I'm a fitness coach and I'm going to help you lose 40 pounds. That person says, okay, cool. And I can get my money back anytime. And you say, yeah. And they don't follow the diet. They don't do the training. They don't ask questions. Then when they ask for a refund, of course they're going to get one because they didn't get the results because they didn't do the work. So when you have a high ticket service-based business, make sure you do guarantees. I'll give you an example. In elite CEOs, we will let people come in with a conditional guarantee, but the conditions are based on X amount of messages, X amount of sales calls, X amount of coaching clinics. They have to submit an accountability tracker. And what we do is we choose things that we know if they do that, they will get results. The clients who don't get results are usually not doing the conditions that we put in the guarantee. And that's the whole point is you make a conditional guarantee to protect yourself and to force success. So if you see that 95% of my clients get results when they track their food every day, if it's a fitness offer, you would make that your condition. For my coaching company or my consulting company, I'd rather call it, is we would add a condition around sales or messaging or marketing, whatever it is that we need the client to do to get results. Okay, so hopefully that's very clear for you guys. Now, an example of an offer that doesn't work without careful thought is a mindset or life coaching offer. And I wanna explain, I'm not against mindset or life coaching, by the way, if you do that, I'm not saying it can't work. I'm saying it, it has to fit the formula. So for example, if I say, Tanner, I will help you feel, let's just, I'm gonna use weird words here, but stick with me. Let's say I say, hey, Tanner, I'm gonna help you feel more fulfilled with mindset work. First off, the outcome is not very clear. What does fulfilled mean? If I ask everyone here, what does fulfilled mean? I bet you, if you guys wanna type it in the chat, feel free, everyone's gonna have different answers. Everyone's going to say different things. It's not clear. If I say how to make more money or making more money, that is a tangible result. You can feel it. You can touch it. You can understand it. Okay? It's not arbitrary. So that would be an example of maybe a bad outcome. The next thing is, what's the risk? Well, the risk is very high because I don't even understand what that means. If I am told I will feel more fulfilled and I don't know what it means, my risk is very high that I won't hit the goal because I don't understand. Then let's say it's a four month program. So it takes some work. So it's less enticing and it takes effort. That's an example of maybe a bad offer. Now in consulting or coaching, 
notice that elite CEOs, if our base program is four months and it takes effort, I cannot take that away. I cannot come on this call and honestly tell you with a straight face that if you come in our program and you don't work hard, you will get results. I cannot say that. But I can tell you, hey, our average client makes $30,000 a month by the end of the program and we have a conditional guarantee, then it makes it more attractive because I'm at least hitting these two. In some offers, you cannot change the bottom. You cannot say, hey, to get a six pack, it's gonna take a day. It's gonna take four months or it's gonna take five months or whatever it may be. But what I can change is the outcome and the risk. And that's where I want a lot of you guys to focus, not because I think it's better. It's actually the most important part of the equation is down here. But a lot of times you're not able to change that in a service-based offer. You're not able to change that in high ticket services. So you focus on what you can control, which is the top portion, okay? Now, a question I get all the time is how to price it properly. Pay very close attention to this section because a lot of you who are starting offers, I get this question all the time. And so I wanted to make this mathematical. I don't want you guys to leave and make emotional decisions. Business is logical. And as long as you trust your numbers, you can make good decisions. So I'm gonna go based off organic. Organic means you're getting free leads. So either you're posting and people come to you or you're reaching out to other people. The next slide is gonna be about ads, okay? And ads is obviously where you're paying Facebook, Instagram, Google to show a video or image to your ideal avatar, all right? So let's go left to right. So if I am selling an $800 product and I have no following, the only way to make sales is I have to reach out to people on my cell phone. Okay, so you guys see my cell phone here? This is how I start an online company, is I use this. Let's say that I send 100, I get 10 to 15 to respond. So, and guys, also keep in mind, these are the numbers you're looking for. What's cool about these slides is, if you go, hey, Tanner, am I doing a good job? Did you, how many messages did you send? I sent 100, how many responded? Zero, you're not doing a good job because you should get for cold traffic, 10 or 15 people to respond if you send a good first message. That's the minimum. It could be more, but this is the minimum. Did you get three to five people to book a sales call? No, you're not doing a very good job. It means you have a skill issue. Did you close one? No, okay, you have a closing issue. These are the numbers I really want you guys to shoot for. We're gonna give you all the scripts, the PDS, everything you need is gonna come with this, okay? It's gonna be completely free, I promise you. I'm not just saying that, it's completely free, but... You're going to have to learn these skills one way or the other, whether it's scripts and videos or this training or doing the work. It's usually going to be a combination, but those are the numbers you're looking for. So let's break this down. If it takes you five hours to send 100 messages, so two hours, every hour you send 20 messages, and then you take five sales calls, that's another five hours, right? Because an hour per sales call, it's going to take you 10 hours to make $800. So that's not bad, but that's only $80 an hour, assuming you say all the right things. And a lot of you guys won't to start. And so you might even have to do more volume. So usually I don't want to price it at $800 because it's going to take me 12 sales just to make 10K and I'm only making 80 bucks an hour. Now, 80 bucks an hour is not bad, but for all that work, uh, I don't know. I don't know, like if I could go and get paid 20 or 25 an hour and not have to do that much work and be a business owner, which is a lot harder than typically just having one job. I don't know if I want to do that. So let's go to the next one. Let's go to 3000. You do the same numbers and now you're at $300 an hour and it only takes three sales to make 10K. Ah, so now we're moving in the right direction. So the same amount of work, but I get... 10 times the results, not, excuse me, 10 times, excuse me, five times the results, give or take, okay? It's about four times, quadruple. Then we go to 5,000. And now I only need two sales to get to 10K. And then we go to 10,000 and I only need one sale. So hopefully you guys can get the gist and see the math. I usually will not recommend you start below 1,500. That's the bare bones, bare minimum. If you are still uncomfortable, you can start at 1,000 but you're gonna see that the lower the price, the less money you're gonna make and you're still spending the same amount of time. The, the closer you get to 10,000, the better your skills need to be. And typically there needs to be a financial ROI. So if you're going, well, Tanner, you know, I sell fitness. 
and there's no financial ROI, then you might want to stick more to the left side of the equation. You're going to be around 3,000 to 5,000, right? If you sell services or products that help people make money and there's a financial ROI, you're going to be closer to the $10,000 mark. Wherever you start, it's up to you. Also keep in mind on day four, I'm going to teach you guys how to say any price you want and still close the deal. I don't care if you say it's a million dollars. The first initial price you throw out to the prospect does not matter if you know how to handle the price objection. We're going to cover that on day four. So if you need help with sales, don't skip day four. Okay, so this is the first price point. Now, when you're doing organic, you're only spending your time. But now we're running ads. So now things change. So people will go, Taryn, you know, why do you charge so much money for your services? Why, why, do you, why can't you just charge 500 bucks? The reason is I have to pay for the team. I have to pay for ads. So let's use the same scenario with an ads metric. So if you have an $800 product, let on average, this is an average. So it means it could be better or worse, but let's give an average. If you spend $1,000 on ads, we're going left to right, you get $10 leads and then you get 100 leads total. Typically out of 100 leads, you'll book 10%. So you get 10 sales calls and then you close one you're going to lose $200. So you actually spent more money to close a deal than you actually made, which is not beneficial. For a $3,000 product, it gets a little better. Now we make $2,200 per sale. Great, we're moving in the right direction. For $5,000, we're making $4,000 per sale. It's even better. And then finally at $10,000, we're making $9,000 per sale. So as you get a bigger team, as you hire more staff and employees and contractors, you have to charge more money to be able to pay for that staff, for that overhead. This is also why charging a higher price point is better because at some point, if you want to be able to go to the Bahamas or have a vacation and not work and still make money, someone else has to do the work. The work doesn't just magically disappear. And so what I've done over the years is I've created products and services that I can charge high price points for so that I can build a team. I have Right now, I have about 70 staff. They get paid every single month. It's very important that we charge a high enough price point so we can deliver the service. So this is all the pricing model. Again, if you're a B2C offer, so business to consumer, there's no financial ROI, you're you know getting dating or fitness, I'm not saying you can't charge a high price point. I'm just saying it's a, usually a little bit harder because... If people only make 70 grand a year, no matter how much you ask for, they only make 70 grand a year. However, if you're able to show them how to make more money, you can move closer to the right hand side and charge more. There's other, uh, you can also go above this guys. You can charge 20,000, 30,000, 50,000. This is a good baseline. So most of you, when you start, I would say start between 800 and 3000, start around 1500 and work up. Okay, for a B2C offer. If you're a B2B offer, I'd start around three to 5,000 and work up from there. These are just guidelines. They're not laws. Okay. Everyone's going to be a little different at the end. We'll do a Q and a, so don't stress, stress out. You guys can ask as many questions as you like. Okay. Now, as I said, easy rule of thumb is you can start at a thousand. And every time you make a sale, you go up by $500 until you start getting more no's than yeses. A great way to see if you're charging too little is you get a lot of yeses very easy. If people are getting to the end and they're just saying yes with no hesitation, that usually means you're not charging enough. The goal should be to close three out of every 10 calls minimum. So if you close three out of 10 calls, 30%, you're doing great. I shouldn't say great, average. That's average. So what I did is when I started selling my first product, which was fitness, I started at 1500, then I went to 2000, then 23, then 25, then three, then 35, then four. And then I said, hmm, as I'm going past three, yeah, I'm getting a lot more no's than yeses and assume that I have my skills dialed in. So I went around 3,200 for four months. For business, I did the same thing. I started at five grand, then six, then seven, then eight, then nine, then 10. And now we're actually one of the most highest priced companies in the industry uh, because of the amount of results we've gotten and the clients we had. And I just like, charging what I feel we're worth. But that's an easy rule of thumb. Now, the last thing in today for your offer, and then we're gonna move into a Q&A, so we're almost there. If you guys have questions, start typing in your questions now, because I'm gonna go through it. I can't bring you guys on live as I was hoping for, or maybe I can move you guys to a panelist, but I'm gonna see based on the questions.
Okay. So here, uh, this is an example of how to prime your profile. You want to make sure that when people go to your Instagram or your Facebook, your LinkedIn, wherever you're making your sales is that people can tell very quickly what you do and why they should listen to you. So for example, I didn't start this way, but I make sure it's very clear people know how much revenue I've generated. Why? Because a lot of people find that impressive. So it builds expertise. It builds trust and authority. I then say who I help. So I help personal trainers and business owners scale. And then I tell them what to do next, right? And I want to create conversations to drive these individuals to buy products or get advice or whatever, right? But the more conversations I have, the more money I usually make. And then on Facebook, I don't have quite as, as much room, excuse me. So I make it a little shorter, but these are examples of how to prime your profile, all right? So that is the training for today, short and sweet. Today is gonna be the most boring day. If you got through today and you're thinking, Tanner, this was so boring, that's okay. It was supposed to be, it's the most boring day, but we got a lot more. We got two days of leads, we got sales, we have client fulfillment and we have ascension. You're gonna wanna make sure you stay for all the days, but particularly days two and three. Days two and three are gonna be super important because it's all about generating leads. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna start moving into the Q&A. We have Leon and Leon said, how do you deal with frustration from leads who are difficult, don't show up slash don't close? I think the big thing, Leon, is understanding that when you start out, you're not supposed to be good. And I think that's where a lot of people get mixed up is people will see my success and go, you know, Tanner did a million dollars his first year of business. But what you guys forget is it took me two years to get that first million dollars. Meaning when I initially started my business, I made no money for two years. So when I'm telling people about my story, I say my first year of, of real business, I made a million dollars, which is true. But the two years prior, I was doing door-to-door -door sales. I was a server. I was failing miserably. And... I didn't know it at the time, but it ended up being the silver lining in the end because I was able to, I, I was, once I was able to get success, I realized why those bad things had happened. And it was a lot easier to swallow to go, this was necessary for me to become successful. And so as you're going through the struggles, Leon, understand it's normal and it's part of the journey. It's part of the process. Leon also asked, Best way to grow a paid community. I would not do that to start, Leon, unless you're more advanced. So if you are, let me know. But for beginners, I think that's one of the worst things you can do because you're going to make so much, so little money for so much time invested. And that's usually a better play for a big audience. All right, Robin said, I want to create a funnel to sell my coaching program as a product so I can charge more for one-to-one -one coaching as a service. Any advice around this approach to automating selling your program? Yeah, so Robin, we will cover this on day... I want to say actually probably tomorrow, day two, when we're talking about how we've generated 1.5 million leads. And we're going to go through the entire CRM system we use to help automate emails, text messages, coaching, onboarding. Obviously, you cannot just automate everything 100%. You have to be somewhat involved in your company, but we're going to go through that entire thing. So we're going to cover that on days two and three. Try to be there. If you can't, there's going to be a recording. We're going to cover that in depth. Matt said, what are your thoughts on selling the offer before building it, focusing on B2B? I think that's a great idea. The reason being is when you sell the offer first, if it doesn't sell, you didn't waste any time building something. If you guys have ever watched Shark Tank, people will build out these products, go to the sharks, ask for millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands, give up all this equity. And the reason is because they built something first before tried to sell it. And then when they tried to sell it, they weren't successful. I would always try to sell it first, especially with a service, because it's essentially thin air. It's information. You can create it in your head. And so let's say one of you bought something right now. I don't actually even have to have it made. I could say it's ready. You buy it. And then the first video is me coaching you one-on-one. -on -one. Because as long as I'm paying you for what you asked for, if I'm showing you, I could create it on the fly. And that's what I did when I first started is I sold it. And then I just stayed one video ahead of my clients and it worked just fine. And so what I did is not only did I not waste a bunch of time before, but I was able to change and edit videos as I went versus building something out and then having to go back and change everything. Patty said, how to validate an offer. Patty, uh, validation comes from selling it. Once you get credit cards from people that validates the offer, you have to sell it. If you can't sell it, 
then it means you have a selling issue or people just don't want what you're selling. Samantha asked, question, my process for last year was to run Facebook ads, free workshop to an application call. This worked great originally, but I've seen significant decline in my results. I feel I'm in place of needing to make a pivot, but I don't know what to do next. What would you do? So Samantha, what I like to do is I like to have as many conversations as possible. So if you're running a free workshop to an application call and you're not messaging every lead, you're not texting every lead, you're not emailing every lead, you're not uh, calling every single lead, uh, even for just even a 15 minute call, uh, you're leaving money on the table, I can guarantee you. Now it's more effort, so I can understand why you may not want to do that, but the more problems I'm having in marketing or my sales, the more touch points we'll try to have. Zach, same answer as I said earlier. Zach said, can I sell $2.95 a month low ticket in the DMs? You can, but I wouldn't recommend it because you have to do so much volume to get out of your situation. Most of you who are on this call, if you're not making 10K a month, for you to change careers, you have to make at least five. And so for you, Zach, I think the amount of effort you'd have to do to do that would be far harder than having a phone call where you close over the phone. We're gonna cover all this, guys. This is just day one. These are great questions, but try to keep these offer-based focus questions about your offer, because we're gonna go all into leads tomorrow, nurturing, try to keep these more offer-based because this is day one. We got six days of this, okay? So more offer-based questions if you have them. Let me go down to Matt. Thoughts on starting an e econ business, focusing on membership components. So Matt, you could, that's not really my space. That's more low ticket. And going back to the ad section, I'm going to go back to that real quick for you. I don't know if you remember, but this is why I don't like e econ offers because when you do e econ offers, this is the risk you take is you spend more money on ads than you can make back on the purchase. And so you have a lot less room for air. That's what I don't like. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to these guys. I'm going through them. Leon asked, I've been doing my biz op for three years. My best month was 37,000. Congrats. It's amazing, dude. I want to scale to 100K a month. I'm only one, the one taking sales means, but I'm bringing a sales closer so I can get more closing on me taking more sales calls. Uh, I think you're asking if you should bring on a closer. I would not recommend that. Here's why. If you're the CEO, you're going to close at the highest close rate. And we're going to cover this on day four. If you bring in a closer, he's going to close 80% as good as you. And that's if he's good. Here's the issue. How many closers who are good want to make less than 10K a month? For those of you who don't know, the answer is not many. So if you're paying 10%, Leon, which is the industry standard, that means max he can make 3.7 thousand a month. I would not do that. No way. Why? Too much work, too hard for too little. Now, if you want to overpay him, that's different. If you want to pay him 15%, be my guest, but now you're overpaying, right? So I usually will try to take all the sales calls until I'm around 100K a month and then outsource. If you're saying, hey, Tanner, I'm way too booked out, then that means you're letting too many people on your calendar that should never be there in the first place, okay? So I wanna be super clear on that. Okay, how do you determine your ideal client as a business coach starting an online business? You need to validate the offer by making some sales. Once you make some sales, it's easy to know who's going to be your most ideal client. For me, we usually find clients that are male between 25 to 35. Why? Because I'm a white male and I'm between 25 to 35. I do have female clients as well. Um, I also notice that people who come from corporate world do really well, especially sales because they have sales experience. But you won't really know until you start making some sales. And we'll go through this on the leads and the sales days, guys, I promise. Okay, Alexis said, getting stuck on social media username. Should I use my name or or what I'm known for? My social media names aren't consistent. Any advice on how to get in the more streamlined without creating confusion or followers? I usually will use my name because it's easier to sell from a personal brand at the beginning than it is from a business brand, unless it's a product, typically. So if it's a product or a SaaS, I think you're fine. Let's say you were selling ping pong balls. So you sold it from ping pong, uh, best ping pong balls. But if you're selling a service and you're a trainer, for example, it's going to do a lot better selling it as Tanner Chittister than as world's best fitness trainer. It, it just, I, I've just seen it a million times. It doesn't mean you can't do it the other way, but hopefully that makes sense. Uh, Tan C, what's your opinion on how to best package my expertise, nonverbal communication, B2B, B2C? So it goes back to what's the outcome? Are they going to make more money? Are they going to have better relationships or are they going to get in better shape? If the answer is this, none of those, then I don't like it at all because no one's going to buy unless they understand what's the benefit. I'm assuming nonverbal communication is going to be some type of sales. So if that's the case, probably going to be B2B because 
businesses are going to be looking to make more sales. Someone who's B2C, who's just a consumer who has a regular job, they're probably not going to care unless it has something to do with dating or something of that nature. Okay. Carlos said, what's your advice to build trust with prospects? Uh, treat them like a human being. Pretend you're at a bar. Talk to them that way. Hey, uh, is anyone sitting here? No? Okay, cool. Uh, hey, my name's Tanner. What's yours? Cool. Mike. Nice to meet you, man. Mike, tell me a little bit about yourself. You know, I saw your uh, car out there. It looks sick. The way you build trust is you start by being interested, being curious about them, curiosity, right? And as you're more interested in people, what they usually say is they'll get more interested in you. They'll be more curious about what you're doing. Leon asks, for more context, I have 24 video testimonials and over 110 five, uh, five-star trust pilot reviews. So Leon, I'll have to double check uh, what we were talking about. Yeah, so Leon, I, I think you're doing great. I just think same same answer. We'll cover it more on the leads and the sales day. I might bring you on here in a bit, uh, possibly, and we could do it that way. But I, I right now, I would stick with the same thing I said. Uh, how do I price off both product and program? My product is a tower garden. So it's how to grow your own fruits and veggies, herbs indoor. And my program is 16 weeks, mind, body, soul transformation. So, uh, you know, unless you're packaging those together, Mary Joy, I wouldn't sell those together. They seem very different. Growing your own fruits and veggies seems very different from the body soul. I'm assuming it is. So if you're doing the fruits, and veggies, that's obviously going to cost less because it's it seems like it's a one-time thing, probably, I'm assuming. Um, and there's no financial ROI unless you can draw it back to they're saving money with, how do I put this? They're saving money by growing their own fruits and veggies, okay? By growing their own fruits and veggies. Hopefully that makes sense. The body, soul, and mind transformation, again, I, I would probably price that higher because it's going to be higher level of service but it's going to come down to what you're going to position as guys. We'll also, what I realized as well is we're going to cover something called the three pillars on the sales portion, which is on Thursday. So this will also go more into offers there on how you're going to position your offer with what we call the three pillars on that call. So there, I, I've realized there's going to be a little bit more of a breakdown there as well. So just keep that in mind. Hopefully that helped Mary Joy. If not follow up and I'll, I'll do my best. Barat said, we offer high ticket treatments. Barat, can, can you let me know specifically what you're offering? Is it medical? I, I'm not really sure I follow. If you can maybe uh, answer one more time. Shana, can you realistically get us qualified leads at $10 per P with, with COD, each call booked? Oh, um, yeah. So Shana, the, to get a call booked, that's different than a cost per lead. So I was saying $10 per lead typically, uh, to get applications, um, it's going to go up as you spend more. So I would say on average, depending, if you're doing a B2C offer, it could be anywhere between 50 bucks to 150. B2B is going to be 150 to 300 on average, and sometimes as high as 500. So I think it depends. Uh, but I think to answer your question, booked calls are completely different than leads. And I, I, I hope you didn't get that. Uh, I didn't mess that up. So I apologize if I did. Okay, Barat. Uh, Spinal decompression, neuropath, uh, neuropathy. I said neuropathy, sorry. Knee pain, IV vitamin therapy. So if you were going to promote it, Barat, the way you promote it is you have to bring it back to what people care about. The reason people are going to want to work with you is you have to convince them that what you're doing is going to get them more healthy, right? Or it's going to get them faster recovery. There has to be some benefit to them wanting to do those things. So for example, let's say, I'll give you an example of one of my clients. He does blood work. And then based on the blood work, they will offer testosterone and HGH and all these other types of things. So what he does on his sales call, and we're going to break it down on day four, guys. You're going to want to see day four for, your, for offers because we're going to break down what we call the three pillars. Today was more just how to structure your offer and price it. Okay, so how do you think about structuring it and how to price it? Day four, we're going to talk about how to sell it. Right. And when you sell it, the way you describe it is going to be very different. And I'm going to break that down for you guys. But the way I would do it, Barat, is I would get them to see that, hey, look, you're probably, they're probably comparing what you do to typical fitness trainers. So, you know, nutrition plan, training plan, accountability. And I would get them to see that by hiring you, they're going to get a much better result through the therapies you're going to do than just getting a normal trainer. And we're going to break this down more on day four. It's a really good question but it's gonna be a little harder for me to answer here. And that's why day four, we're gonna spend a lot of time on this, okay? And it's a great, it's a really good question. Uh, Shana is asking, are those qualified leads? 95% of the leads I got from Meta as were broker than broke. 
Uh, yeah. So Shana, a lot of times, and we'll we'll talk about this, and hopefully I'm saying it right. If it's Shana, I apologize. But a lot of the lead quality is going to come down to your ad, and then your qualification process. Uh, it, it's an easy. I'm, I'm not saying you never got bad leads, but at the end of the day, there's only so much uh, targeting power that is going to actually make the lead good. A lot of it comes down to the actual ad itself and then your qualification process. Uh, I've been doing this six years. And we've had so many leads and I can tell you, we definitely have bad leads. Um, we definitely get bad leads. And so a lot of times it's more, what is your ad talking about and saying versus the actual overall quality of lead. If you had 95% of your leads that you're saying are bad, what I would do is I would be looking at your entire ecosystem, your follow-up processes, the what the copy is in the ad, the image or the video. I'd be starting there before I even thought about looking at the leads themselves, right? Because I want to see your whole process A to Z because sometimes if the ad itself is not speaking to the right person or the follow-up process is off, it's not going to work. You also have to understand you, you're talking about COD. I know what program that is. You're trying to automatically qualify people. So it's a lot harder to qualify people automatically without having any type of conversation, just watching a webinar than it is when you're actually talking to people. And when we go into day two on leads, we're going to talk about that. And I think you're going to want to stick around for that because you're going to see, like I say, it was the most boring day because it's the most boring part of building a business. It's the offer, but it's still important. It's the base of the pyramid tomorrow. We're going to talk about how to qualify, how to get leads, what to say, how to say it, how much to spend, how to run your ads. We're going to break the whole thing down. Um, that's why I'm really excited for days two and three, because this is, I have to do today, but this is the most boring day for me as well, but it's super important. So a lot of you guys are asking a lot of sales and lead questions. Don't worry. We're going to cover this on days two and three specifically and day four is sales. So the middle of the week is the most juice, right? You're going to get the most out of it. And we're going to cover more of those uh, tomorrow. So hopefully um, that makes sense. And then Matt, I'm in the process of creating a B2B offer. I'm stuck between doing a six to eight week program and doing a monthly retainer model. Would you do both? Put everyone through the program and graduate them in a monthly retainer? Or would you build that out? Uh, I, Matt, I like to start with a set time frame because what can happen is if you do a monthly retainer, you'll get a lot of attrition up front. So what I would start with is maybe a three month program for 10, 10 grand is, let's say the price is 10 grand, and then you can move them into monthly retainers after. Uh, you're get, you get a lot less drop-off after a client graduates than you do at the beginning, because in the beginning, it's the hardest and the client has to put in the most work. So to protect yourself in the business, I typically would do a set fee for a set time, and then you can move them into retainers after, okay? Do you think I can sell an offer around guaranteed organic followers, or do you think it needs to be the result? Yeah, you can, Zach as long as you get them to see that by guaranteeing organic followers, they're going to make more money. They don't care if they get guaranteed organic followers, they want to make more money. And guys, we didn't cover the three pillars today because the three pillars is more sales, right? Today it's just how to structure your offer, but we're going to, we're going to go through that stuff. Isaac asked, would you, would you change the offering rate if your client signed up for longer term, like a year? Yeah, uh, it, it depends. I mean, it, it depends how much value. So if, when I'm selling fitness, Let's say I charge three grand for four months. Typically, because these clients are not seeing a financial ROI, if they stayed on for fitness, I usually would do a little bit of a lower price or a discount if they signed up for a year, right? So let's say I charge 4,000 for three months or four months. Then for the rest of the year, I might charge five grand or six grand, right? And it's easier to fulfill. For business, it would depend. I'd have to see more of your offer, but... It, it it would it, it would depend on that. Hopefully, I don't know if I'm answering that correctly, but it, it would depend a little bit because in my program, we don't lower the rate because it's difficult, right? Like we're doing the same amount of work, but if let's say it was easier or it was group coaching and went from one-to-one -to, -one to group coaching, then yeah, I would probably lower the rate. James said, what's your skincare regimen? Dude, I can actually share that with you. It's, it's pretty intense. I appreciate it. I actually work pretty hard on my skin. So uh, thank you. Um, Edgar said, I sell my offer and validate, but haven't scaled. Could you correct the offer in your program to sell easily? Yeah. Like guys, look, at end of the day, I'm, I, I believe my, my company is very good at what we do. I'm not here to sell you anything. If you guys want to hop on a call, it's a free call. You know the drill, eliteseos.com, book it. And you can talk to my team. Worst case scenario, you waste an hour. Best case, you work with us. But I, I, want, I want you guys to keep in mind, if, if you, the, the whole point in getting a coach is for implementation. The information is out there. And that's what we're going to cover in these six days. 
implementation means you know you should message, but you're not good at it. You know you need to close on the phone, but you're struggling. You know you need to follow up, but you don't know how. That's implementation. The information is what I'm sharing today, right? So if you feel you need help with implementation, go for it. But I want it to rest assure you guys, I'm not doing this to sell something at the end. There's no pitch. Every day, we're going to go through the material. There's a Q&A. And at the last day, that's it. And um, I'm doing this because I I'm really excited about this material. This is, like I said, this is the most boring day. Every other day, tomorrow and Wednesday, it's going to be crazy. I love leads. I love generate, generating uh, marketing. I love sales um, because that's how I became wealthy. I think that's it for today, guys. So I'm going to wrap up there when we post these videos. It's not just going to be the videos. We're going to have PDFs, templates, scripts, emails, messaging scripts, sales scripts, sales recordings, everything. It's going to take a little bit of a time to get it together. Not a lot, a couple of days, et cetera. But I'm first focused on finishing all of this. And then at the end of the week, we're going to put it all on YouTube with the links. And all the links, once you guys um, put in your email, we're going to shoot that to your email and it's going to be completely free. There's nothing to pay. We're going to get you all the information. But I want to make sure I don't just tell you what to do, but I give you the scripts and the PDFs and everything you're going to see. Today, again, was the most basic day. But tomorrow through Thursday is going to be super high level, super heavy duty. And I want to make sure you guys are around for the ride for that. So thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate you. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow, same time, 3 p.m. Eastern sharp. We're going to start right on time uh, now that I figure this out. And uh, save your questions to then on leads and sales. And tomorrow is going to be a big day. So thank you guys for being here. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.